do you want to hear? I was going to, I have just a couple of things here. Yeah. Do you want to hear, are you interested in how Project Graduation started, Field Day started, and Charity MMD Ski Day started? If you're interested, I have, I can kind of run that through that. If you're not interested, yes. we don't have to talk about it. I don't know. Really? Interested. Yeah, we're interested. Well, I think Project Graduation is really interesting because, as you both, I suspect, know, um, they're still doing it. And it's a party uh, after graduation. And I, I, you, did you guys go through Project Graduation? When did it start? It doesn't sound started familiar. Started by Tom Farrell, who just died, unfortunately. He was a great guy. He was the principal from 88 to 90 and the superintendent from 90 to 2003. Okay, that was just... Yeah, a- I think that would have been after us. But- okay, well, some of you know, if, you, if you're not... Anyway, it worked out really well. Um, you you guys probably remember you could drink when you were 18, right? Yeah. Yeah. 3.2 yeah. beer. So what the parents would do, in fact, you can tell me about this. You don't have to listen to me. You went through it. You tell me. So what I, the first time I, I realized what was going on, it was like maybe 77, 78. I went up to a field in Ashcroft and there's a keg of beer. This is after graduation and all 3.2 beer. And all the kids were out in this field drinking 3.2 beer. The teachers would go out, maybe have a beer, maybe not. And tell the kids, yeah, we're going to miss you. You know, all that kind of stuff. And then we'd leave. I think some parents stayed with him. And they would spend the night in this field drinking beer. You know? And I yeah, we did, thought, uh, we did ours uh, for the Class 86 was at the, the base of Buttermilk, West Buttermilk, over at uh, Aaron McPherson's mom had a restaurant over there. Yeah, and that's what I, next thing I was going to say, Chris, is a lot of the parents... You know, that probably some guy on that ranch. And that's why the kids were there. And then, yeah. you know, there's some really nice big houses and restaurants and stuff in Aspen. And a parent would do take her take her turn, you know. And by the we way, did. I wanted to mention your dad, Chris. But when you, we did Project Graduation, I'll tell you how it started in a second. But we got a lot of gifts from the local merchants. And they were fantastic. Okay? Your dad was great. We'd always get something from Pomeroy Sports, okay? So, <laughs> kudos to him, all right? So, yeah. um, what happened was, we were getting kids killed. You probably remember that. I don't know, you know, like a, a child, a young, a teen, you know, a high school kid would die in a car wreck. It was really, it's horrible. Cause you know, 16, 18 years old, dying. So uh, I went and talked to Tom Farrell, who, uh, like I said, was the principal. And I said, Tom, um, what can we do? I was a student center sponsor. And he said, oh, we'll do Project Graduation. And still going today. So good for him, right? And what what happens is about five o'clock, you go to wherever. And we we go into the Aspen Club. And you spend the night. And then about five or six o'clock, you can leave. No booze. Okay. Now, I don't know whether people were slipping in on the side or having a joint in the back, right. you know, I, but theoretically, no booze, no drugs, right? And we do, all, you know, you can imagine the Aspen Club, tennis, basketball, waves, swimming pool, hot tub. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the kids didn't want to do it. I mean, this is something about, you might remember yourself, some teacher said, hey, you can't have this party where you drink even though after 1984 it was illegal. You can't have this party. Um, we're going to have a school party. And the kids are going like, You're full of it, man. All right. So Tom took me and several kids to Maine, where he was from, where he taught. He was a principal there mm-hmm. before he moved to Aspen. And we all, the kids, I, me and Tom stayed at the friends of his house. Same bed. <laughs> it's very, very low key. Uh, trip and the kids all stayed with other kids and the other kids told the like the student senate's president vice president secretary and treasurer so on they told them this is the greatest thing you're going to love it and then like i said the local community because remember back in those days you didn't have all the change right and even if he did somebody who ran it was like like you know your dad chris so um I know that wasn't a chain, but you know what I'm trying to say. The yeah. local guy yeah. running, right? So um, everybody 
And of course, after the first year, people looked forward to it. It was great. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's part. I'm sorry you missed it. It was a lot of fun, and you maybe got some swag. <laughs> and then uh, you guys, do you know Kurt Brendlinger? Uh huh. Yeah. And, and Johnny Kelleher. Yeah, yeah. Dana. Dana yeah. Brendlinger. I remember going to school with her for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, John Kel John Kelleher Jr. Yeah. Um, had MD. He's yes. Good, good he friend was my neighbor. Day. Yeah. And um, he died. Yeah, he was my neighbor. He died in seventh grade for me. Yeah, it was really it's tragic, right? Yeah. So sad. So Kirk went. Our students and a sponsor. Kirk went, hey, George, let's raise money for muscular dystrophy. And I said, well, how are we going to do that, Kirk? And he said, we'll have a ski day. <laughs> All right. Now, his dad, Jack Renlinger, was a big uh, poncho in the ski court. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. So, of course, he had the end. He went and talked to his dad. His dad said, sure, you know, we'll do it in the spring when, you know, it's kind of, you know, daiquiri snow. And, um, you guys can ski a buttermilk. All right. You know, and kayak, I mean, for a lot of kids. But it was cool because the kids who really didn't ski or were just learning to ski could ski West Buttermilk. And the really good skiers could ski kayak, right? right? I mean, it wasn't Aspen Mountain, but it's better. It's free. Five bucks. I'm sorry. They had to pay five bucks. And um, and then we, would, the teachers would cook lunch. Did you guys participate in that? I think... That sounds yeah. familiar. Yes, I yeah, did. I, I think I, we probably did. I, that's where he fell and got my concussion. Um, so that was really cool. And one of the things I wanted to say earlier um, was we could do this kind of stuff because we were only three to 400 kids. You can imagine if you had like... 1,200, yeah. 2,000 kids in your high school. But, you know, and that, the cool thing about that was like, Andy, if you were sitting on a... You know, you could sit in the table in the comments. Did you remember that? Yeah. Well, if you're sitting in the table in the comments, I wouldn't say, hey, kid, get off the table. I say, Andy, you need to get off the table. Or I'm going to take you to see the principal. And you say, OK, George. And then, of course, soon I'll let you probably get back on. But anyway, I knew your name. I never taught you, perhaps, but I knew your name, right? Yeah. So that that enabled us to do all this kind of stuff. That made, made XED and Alto Red really good. And it made field day, or ski day real good. And the last thing I'll talk about is field day. Do you guys remember that? Uh, is that the end of the year where you go do? No, a it's Christmas? homecoming. Oh, homecoming. You go out and you do like tug of war, discus, discus throw. Oh, wow. Uh, I think I, I think throw. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. We put you in like teams. Remember, we only had 300 students. <laughs> so you put you like in teams of 12, 10, 15 kids and you do, you do all this competition and whoever won, we kept score. Ian, Ian Wagner um, worked up an algorithm that I could have team A play team seven, team seven play team three, you know, right. work that out. Um, and whoever won the field day competition um, got free admission to the homecoming dance. And since I was, a, home, homecoming was run by student senate. So, you know, I could, I had that in. And that worked out really well. And here's why we did it. This is what I think you might be interested in. So the seniors, I don't know if you guys did this or not, I'd be interested in hearing your stories. The seniors would really attack the freshman floats. We used to have a float through town. Every school grade had a float through town. The band would march, you know, there's a little parade. Well, the seniors would just try to destroy the freshman float. They throw eggs at it. Um, and it's, it just got worse and worse and worse. So finally, I will not mention his name, even though I still remember, tried to burn down the freshman float. Well, mm -hmm. it was being built in somebody's drive. I don't look it up, Andy. The float was sitting in the front of somebody's house. Thank God it wasn't in the garage. And we tried to burn it down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's kind of like, well, we could have destroyed a very expensive home. So that's how we started. I think that was my year. But okay, I we can't have any more attacking the freshman. It's like X said, we're going to put them together. We're going to integrate them. And that's how we ended up with fielding. I think that was my year that that happened. <laughs> you probably know who did it then, but we're not going to tell. Yeah, there was this, this a few of the jock guys and a few uh, I don't know. other I, I guys. Heard it, and... But I don't know for sure, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to this, no, I know, I know who did it. I know, and they got into trouble, and it was a big deal. And it was. Well, so yeah, because they could have burned the house. <laughs> yeah. No, it was the poor freshman. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, here you bust your butt working on this float and then some guy burns it down. Yeah. All right, we got field day and I don't know if they still do it, but it was a lot of fun. Well, the uh, it, it felt to me like the the uh, a big piece that helped pull people together in that way too was the outdoor ed stuff because you are dealing with the different grades and you are dealing with stuff. And so it felt to me like that was such a good, it did force kids to have to deal with each other. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a click breaker for sure. Yeah, we tried, we had a big, one of our big uh, debates, because you asked me at the beginning of this conversation was how it got started. One of our big debates, because you guys remember, <laughs> the dog is really cute, Chris. <laughs> the, um, uh, um, the marble trip was at the end of the year, right? It's the culmination of the year. So some of the guy, uh, some of the people, some of the teachers wanted it end of the year and other ones of us wanted it at the beginning because we, just for the reason you mentioned, break down the clicks, get the kids to know each other. You know, if you're a freshman, you're coming in, you're scared, you don't know what's going on. Let them get a senior, you know, if you, if you canoe with some kid, some freshman and you're a senior, you're, you're going to treat him nice, nicer right. than if you just see him in the hallway and bump him out of the way, right? So um, anyway, that was an issue. And the reason I even mentioned it is because that affected the trips. Like, for example, I did backpacking in Canyonlands. Well, I could do that in the spring because we had a lot of water, but I couldn't do it in the fall because we couldn't get water, right? Because it was all gone. So that 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 was a, a, a this is a logistical part that you guys might not have thought about, right? Yeah. Wow. So that's it. Anything else? Oh, IB. You want to know how IB started? What? No. Go for International it. Baccalaureate. Go for it. Okay. Um, so uh, our I told you our, our superintendent was Tom Farrell, and the school board. Uh, we did uh, AP. We had you know. About five or six of us who drew an AP. But the cool thing about International Baccalaureate is it's a diploma. And in Colorado, by law, if you get an IB diploma, you get you go in to see any Colorado college as a sophomore. Hmm. Well, think about it. yeah, you know, I like I said, Chris, I saw your son back there. Well, you just he he just saved you thirty grand, man, right? <laughs> You're going, hey, hey, go for it. So. Um, so uh, we started that. I was the first IB coordinator. So I feel kind of, I'm bragging. I started <laughs> AP and I was the coordinator for IB. Kendall Evans, the principal, and Tom Farrell, the superintendent, and the school board did it. I was really stuck on AP. And Kendall told me, okay, George, the train is leaving the station. You need to get on or you're going to get run over. And I said, um, well, you know, I kind of like to be the engineer, all right? And so we started an IB uh, program, which is pretty cool. And um, in the, and then Kathy, in 2000, in 2000, and then in, I did it for the first two years and I had to retire because of my seizures. And then Kathy did it the last two years. And now uh, Aspen is a really, really good IB school. For the first mm -hmm. four years, we had a 100% pass rate, a lot better than me with AP the first year. And um, it's really, really cool deal. That is something that the high school should be really proud of. It's neat. Yeah, it is neat. Very cool. The high school's come a long way since our day. <laughs> yeah, it has. Well, you know, progress. Well, I just remember that, like, if you wanted to be on the soccer team, it was co-ed and it was rec. They didn't even have a high school, didn't even have a soccer team. It was just like baseball, volleyball, basketball and football. That was it. You know, and now they've got lacrosse, women's soccer, boys' soccer. They got volleyball. I mean, they got everything. They've got, they've got the uh, skiing too, like the alpine yeah, skiing. Yeah, Mike Flynn coached that, and they <clears throat> they've won like five or six state championships. Well, cross country too. They were always like I remember Pierre was always pretty good at cross country. Oh yeah, we won a state championship. Annie Ferris won the individual girls, and the boys won in. 86, 85. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, we we were good. And now, but here's something, you guys. I know you you probably have heard of this, but this is real. Girls could not run cross country. It's only 5k, right? Three miles, 3.1 miles, right? Until 1978 in Colorado, we did not have a girls team 
until 1978. Wow. And John Bonoy uh, had done the, uh, not John Bonoy, oh, the woman who won the 1976 Olympics. All right, she run the Olympics in 1976, 26.1 miles, and here we are, couldn't have the girls run 5K. But we did, all right? They got it, and they did really well, and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed coaching it for 10 years. Well, some of our best soccer players were the girls that were on the ski team because they were oh. using soccer as dry land training for ski season. And man, were they aggressive. And it was like the other teams had no idea. They were like, oh, girls, you know, they had no idea our girls could slide tackle and do whatever, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, that's you mentioned Pierre Palapier. He, he and his brother, Andre, they did cross country because they were uh, cross country skiers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's perfect, right? You yep. cross country running, then you just started. Cross -country <laughs> well, you had Todd Stone was was running with you too, right? Oh yeah, he was good. Yeah, and Melville, okay, you had Craig Melville. Todd's girlfriend. Anyway, oh she, she came in second behind Dennis. Hey, Janice so. Voorhees is who. Janice, nice Janice guy. Voorhees. Yes. Good job, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, she ran. She ran varsity. Oh wow. Yeah, someplace in the east, and maybe South Carolina. I can, I'm not sure where. I should. I shouldn't guess. Wow. Well, paid off. All that training paid off. <laughs> well, uh, jeans don't hurt, right? Yeah. 